Tatum to zero in this video i'll be showing you how to get the boundary polygon of any community using google maps and qgis so um it's easy to get the boundary polygon of a country i think that is available the shape files are available freely online if you want the boundary of a state or county or district i don't know what you call it in your in your country so it's also easy to get that if you want the boundary of a local government which is um the unit that is lower than the states from the nigeria so in nigeria we have country country level there are states under the country then we have local government areas in other local government areas we have wards so it's easy those are available because they are political boundaries so they are the polygons are available online however to get for a small community like a village or a town it's not easy so let's say i want to get the boundary of a community there's a community in my hometown called obodi so i search for it this community is difficult to find the polygon boundary but luckily for us it's available on google maps um, zoom in a little much. Okay, um, I think okay, I'm, too, I'm zooming in too much. Okay, so it's available on Google Maps. Google has the boundary here. Yeah. However, um, Google doesn't allow us to download this polygon. It's only available as an image here. Yeah. So we have just the raster, we have just a picture of it. These styles are provided to us through WMS service. Um, they are, as you are aware, WMS is one of the two common protocols that are used to transfer geospatial data to the internet. There's WMS and there's WFS. So WMS is, um, you rasterize the data, you turn it into an image, then you share it to the internet. So that is the protocol that Google is using to serve this data so it's just an image even if you go and check the page source you understand using your browser console what you see is just tiles of images you won't see the shapefile or geojson of this boundary anyways so that brings us to the solution how we are going to work on it um the simple workflow is to take a screenshot Take a screenshot of this polygon here, then um, we are going to digitize or we'll do reference that in QGIS, then we'll digitize it. So um, I'll open my Windows to and search for the sniping tool. So this tool allows me to take a screenshot um, slowly. Okay, so we have these two. I'll take a screenshot of this. I'll just slide this place out. I um, think this should do. Right? Yeah. So we have this image here, and I'll save it on my desktop. Let's save us. Just save it on my desktop. Call it over the. Save. Okay, so I can close this now. I can minimize this. I'm on QGIS. I'll create a new project. Now, um, the next thing I need to do is to add a base map. Well, previously, um, about a week ago, I created a video on how to get this many base maps in QGIS. I'll provide a link to it. So you can just watch the video if you are out. Um, I'll add Google Maps this map and um, add to projects. So you can sometimes do it. Okay, good. So here we have we have Google Maps. Um, I know the community. It's around. Um, it's in around. It's in Ocean State. Around the Shibuya. Um, this is a good. So 
Um, this method requires you to have some on that some knowledge of where your tongue is located. So the village is around here, over there. there. The next thing we want to do is we want to georeference that image. Um, you know our image doesn't have doesn't have coordinates, it doesn't have graphics. So uh, we have to just identify some junctions on this place, then link them to um, our canvas. So let's see. Good. So we are here now. Now we we'll go to um, a star georeferencer. We want to georeference that image that is on our desktop. So I'm going to add that image from my desktop. Okay. Just do this. Okay. Now the next thing to do is to start identifying junctions or um, any place I can identify here, then I'll link it to the to my canvas here. You understand the you get the idea. So if I can get about five places that are spread around the um, area, then I should be fine. So I'll just um, zoom in here. I think this junction is fine. Pick this. Okay. It's asking me for the projection. Okay. Then um, I'm not going to enter a coordinates. I'll choose from my map canvas. You know, the conventional way is to just enter coordinates X and Y. But in this case, I don't even know the coordinates, but I know it's physically on the map canvas. So I'll go to from map canvas. Then I'll zoom into this place and then pick this. Um, junction here, yes, okay, we have that, so I can add more, right, so um, add points, let me see where else I can find, um, I think this junction is okay, yeah, this looks good, um, snow white, okay, for my canvas, let's see, Taking me out of the actually, yeah. It's a bit difficult to work. Okay, this junction you can see it here. So let me add a point here. We'll zoom you well to get to the pixel level and map canvas and then see it right. So I'll add the point here. Okay, good. We find somewhere else. I think I've got a three for should be. Don't waste so much time. Okay, uh, let me see this junction here. Okay, let's not send it there. Okay, let's not send it there. Okay, I'll pick that. Right. This junction, you can see it's this place is here, so let me just add a point here. Then from the canvas, 
Und ja. Okay. Okay. Ich nehme jetzt mal morgen. Ich schicke jetzt mal morgen. Let me see. 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 Yeah, it's kind of handy. So I've got five points around spread across my app. So I'll click on play. It's going to ask me for some settings, set transformation type, you know, or transformation type. Um, I'll just take a team split, team split, um, span, compression on everything, then OK. And let's see. So let's play. The video reference, and then you can see um, there's an image. This doesn't get us all conversions. Switch your reference, switch your reference. So the video reference was it's not showing sure our canvas. What is wrong? What's up? Okay. Oh, I guess what's the problem is. So let me just go to the desktop. Okay, good. So we have this underscore modified dot stiff. So this is your referenced image of our editor project. Good. So now we can just can toggle this off and see that's well the points really value. So what QGIS did, um, I don't know whether this is a new feature. So when I clicked on GeoReference, it just created a new raster in the same location as the, as the original um, raster. It created a new raster here and named it underscore modified, which is the GeoReference version so now that we have this, the next thing we can do, very simple, right? We can just create a polygon, a shape file. So I'm going to create a KML. I don't want to delete on my desktop. I want a single file. Or alternatively, I can create a geo package. So layer, create layer, new geo package layer. So, um, sorry. Yeah, it's a uh, new okay, new job okay there. And then on my desktop or call it the desktop. I'll just give it um on test as then the table name is going to be test um, body. Okay. The geometry type is going to be polygon, right? Then the, the name of the town. So it's the text string then under the advanced option can we create special index to make it faster? So okay. Good. So we have a polygon layer. The next thing to do is um select it, toggle on editing, then digitize um can start digitizing it. So uh just Space okay, so I'll draw this out. Okay, I'm going to draw this, then draw this out. Uh, okay. Yeah. 
Good, so I think we are done. So I can just um, right click and OK. So the name or enter or what they the name is going to generate auto generate the future ID. So we have the polygon now. You can save it. Yeah. We can check the actions table. So thank you for watching. Uh, I'll see you in another video. Bye.